Editing videos takes up a lot of time and making sure that the right clip is at the right place and that all the effects and callouts look the way that you want makes the process even longer. But time is usually something that we don't have too much of. So what if I told you about a few things that I do in the editing process that can speed up the way that you edit your videos immensely? Mm. This is gonna be a good one. Just gonna start this video out by saying, uh, hey, welcome back to the channel if uh, you've been watching me before and if this is your first time. My name is Peter, nice to meet you. Hope you're gonna enjoy this video. And if you do, consider subscribing and maybe giving it a thumbs up. That'd be highly appreciated. Editing videos is half the work of creating a video. You go out and shoot the things that you want to shoot, but then you have the rest left. You need to piece everything together into something that is intriguing and interesting for someone else to watch. And a couple of things that I do when I record these talking heads is doing crop-ins and crop-outs. If you're doing this within Final Cut Pro without any plugins, it's kind of a tedious process. It's simple, but it's a tedious process and it takes up a little bit more time than I would wish for. So instead of going in to the inspector every single time that I'm gonna increase the scale of a video, what I do is that I use the zoom in element from the MKBHD plugin pack. I'm gonna drop a link in the description down below. And then I drag that on top of the first zoom in that I wanna do off the talking head. Then I adjust the amount that I wanna zoom in. And then I just copy and paste that on top of the different clips throughout the video where I want the crop in to happen. Also make sure to uncheck the animation in and animation out when you're doing this. Just by doing that, I have saved so much time editing my videos because it goes faster. Then I can just edit the entire talking head and then go in and adjust those things afterwards without thinking, oh, was it, was it actually this clip that I increased the scale of or was it that clip? Basically what happens when you turn the animation off on the zoom in is that you don't have the smooth zoom in. But if you wanna have that, you just adjust the animation and make the video even more engaging. And I think that this tool is freaking amazing. The next thing that I wanna talk about is to make your B-roll a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more immersive because most of the time when I shoot my B-roll, I just pan from right to left, or left to right, I don't know which which direction what we shoot, but uh, oh. And most of the time that actually works because it looks good, it looks smooth, it's like you have a nice pan going in the direction that you're panning. What you can do is that you can take the constant zoom again from the MKBHD pack, add that to your video at the same time as you're moving from one side to another, you can also zoom in a little bit on the product, which makes it look way more dynamic and it makes it look even more planned out in a way. So going from kind of a, you know, boring shot in something that is a little bit more interesting. The cool thing with the constant zoom is that I don't only use it for when I'm making my bureau. For example, if you've seen the cinematic video that I shot together with my friend, Erik Granqvist, then I use this technique to make the clip come alive a little bit more, adding on the nice constant zoom effect to enhance the dramatic feeling of the clip is something that you sometimes just can't do when you're shooting the video because maybe you don't have a gimbal or maybe you don't have the focus set to the right position and you just stand there static but you still want to have the hand and look then this is a perfect complement to do that and if you look at a timeline right here then you can see that i've been using these constant zooms and zoom ins a whole lot throughout the entire video. I'm gonna drop a link in the description if you wanna head over there and check that video out. And again, you can do these things just by keyframing in the inspector, but it's also gonna take you a whole lot more time and you're also gonna miss out on all the other good stuff that the MKBHD pack has to offer. For example, if you wanna add some vertical content in your videos without duplicating the clip and expanding the scale and then adding on stuff, then you just drag and drop that and boom, you got a vertical clip that you can attach that looks good because it's already blurred out the background or duplicated. There's some magic going on there that makes it look good. If you'll watch some of my YouTube videos on here, then you probably have seen these kind of call outs. And if you purchase my Final Cut Pro course, then you probably have seen the picture in pictures that I use in that course to help you 
you know, learn the stuff that I talk about. And those effects actually comes from the plugin M Channel Cyber that I've been a part of together with Moshe VFX to be able to provide you with some of the best things that I think you should have as a YouTuber and content creator. What I like the most about these callouts is that you can adjust almost anything. You can go in there and drag the callout that you think looks the best. You can adjust the color of the text, and then you can adjust the glow size, uh, the flickering, and maybe you want to have some sort of list where you show the best products and you know do some sort of rating, then you can just drag that in and then adjust that. And the cool thing is that you can track all of these plugins within Final Cut Pro. The way that you do this is that you choose the callout that you want to have, and then you drag it onto your timeline adjust the length depending on what you wanted to say and adjust the position of it and mark the call out and then press transform tool and then up top the preview win window you're gonna see tracker you're gonna hit that and then adjust the size of the tracking area that you want to track so for example if you want to track an eye then you make sure that tracker is around the eye that you want to track and then once you're satisfied you're gonna go up you're gonna hit the arrow that goes to the right next to analyze. Click that, Final Cut is gonna do its thing, and then play it back. You have a tracked call out, simple, easy, quick. And as you just saw, I was using a picture in picture method, and this is great if you're doing a lot of tutorials. And within the M Channel Cyber Pack, it actually contains a couple of different picture in pictures that you can use. The way that I do it is that I drag the picture in picture to the place where I want it to be, and then I make sure that length is the same as the clip that I want to have the picture in picture in. I mark the clip down below, hit Alt G, and then create a compound clip from that, and then go in to the picture in picture, choose drop zone, click the arrow, and then go down choose the clip that we just made as a compound clip and boom you're done i i don't know if there's an easier way to do this but this is the way that i've learned and there might be some simpler way and if you do know a simpler way please do drop it in the comments because i would love to know but this is also something that saved me a lot of time instead of scaling down and keyframing in and out points and doing all of that so just drag it out make sure they have the place Bam, you're done. And then we have something that looks like this, which is selectors. So if you want to highlight something in the video, when you're talking about the product, then you can just add these in. So nice, clean animation. By using these, you also make your dull B-roll footage a little bit more alive. I think that when you're doing tutorials, for example, highlighting where the mouse is or where the mouse is clicking is a great way. And this is a method that I used when I was recording or editing all the course episode for my Final Cut Pro course. Link is in the description. And these are also trackable and drag and drop, so super simple to use. These are just a couple of small things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis whenever I edit my videos, whenever I try to think of how I can make my videos better. For example, when I'm testing a camera or testing a new drone, I always use the callouts from M Channel Cyber. And whenever I wanna have something that looks a little bit more clean, I go back to the MKBHD pack and uh, just to give you a little bit of last touch here, if you want to have a little bit of cooler zoom in with a little bit of motion blur, we also got that in the M Channel Cyber Pack. Check this out. Huh? That's a pretty cool one. You can turn on and off the effect as well. If you do that, it's going to look like this. Huh? Yeah. Link is in the description. And if you're new to Final Cut Pro and you're liking the way that I edit my videos, then I do have a Final Cut Pro course covering everything that you need to know to go from zero to up here and by the way you also get five exclusive presets from motion vfx unique to the course as well thanks so much for watching really appreciate you and uh don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it peter france will say goodbye